I'm Sarah Marco, and I am the school counselor for all preschool through eighth grade. Thank you for joining us for worship, and happy Mother's Day. We are thanking God today for all the moms and mother figures. So, here it is, the weekly church news. Remember, you can use your online bulletin to follow along to, with today's worship services. It also includes links to our online connection card, a prayer request form, and online giving. Visit stjohnsorange.org slash bulletin. Vacation Bible School 2022. It's time to get signed up. VBS 2022 is going to be monumental. Vacation Bible School is an all hands on deck type of event here at St. John's. If you are available the week of June 20th through the 24th, please consider serving with our church family at VBS. Adult and youth volunteers are needed. It's also time to get your kids registered to attend. So register today. Our early bird, bird discounts end on May 13th. Please visit stjohnsorange.org slash VBS for more information. Teaching Church is back in session. Our Teaching Church adult Bible study experience happens each Sunday between services at 9.45 a.m. in the dining room. The current session, New Testament Questions and Answers, just started last week. Also, at the very same time is our youth style teaching church for students in grades six through 12 held in the garage. Join us for either one, no registration is needed. And for more details, visit stjohnsorange.org slash events. St. John's Concert Series. Join us June 5th because St. John's organist, Carissa Rabel performs an organ concert along with organist Charles Roche. You won't want to miss this exceptional concert at St. John's with our 150 rank pipe organ. Concert series details are found at stjohnsorange.org slash concerts. St. John's annual congregational assembly meeting is scheduled for Tuesday, May 17th at 7 p.m. in Walker Hall. All confirmed members over the age of 18 are encouraged to attend and participate. The annual agenda always includes a financial report, next year's budget approval, and elections for lay leaders. In addition this year, we will review the newly revised St. John's Articles of Incorporation, Constitution, and Bylaws. There are paper copies of these revised documents available today as you exit. The documents are also available on the church website. Please note, nominations are now being accepted for several open positions on the Council of Schools and the Council of Elders, but act fast. The last day to submit a nomination is tomorrow, May 9th. You'll find the meeting details, documents for review, and nomination information at stjohnsorange.org slash assembly. If you have any questions, please contact Jennifer McClellan in the church office. Thanks again. It's great to have you with us, and I pray that today's worship experience enriches your faith life and brings you encouragement for the upcoming week. Hope to see you next Sunday as we worship our risen Savior. Together, have a great week. Well, welcome. It's good to see you. It's good to see you. No better place to be on a Sunday morning than right here at St. John's as we gather together to worship our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And a happy Mother's Day to all you moms out there. We really are glad that you're here to worship with us today at the ringing of the bell. We'll stand together and sing our opening hymn. Christ's richest blessings to you as we worship our Lord together.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Alleluia. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Praise the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. He has given us new life and hope. He has raised Jesus from the dead. God has claimed us as his own. Alleluia. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. This is love for God. Jesus, Jesus commands us. Love each other for God and love you. Do you confess that you have sinned against God? That you have not loved each other like He has loved you? Almighty, Almighty Father, we confess that we have sinned. We know that our sins grieve you. We deserve punishment for eternity. And we would receive that punishment were it not for the grace of your perfect plan, the sacrifice of your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ. We ask for mercy for the sake of him, the Lamb that was slain. The Lord has promised mercy to us and has sent his son to redeem our souls. Everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. As a called and ordained servant of the risen Christ and by his authority, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Who is it that overcomes the world? First reading comes from the book of Acts, chapter 20, written by Luke, the writer of the gospel. Now I commit you to God and to the word of his grace, which can build you up and give you an inheritance among all those who are sanctified. I have not coveted anyone's silver, gold, or clothing, you yourself know that these hands of mine have supplied my own needs and the needs of my companions. In everything I did, I showed you that by this kind of hard work, we must help the weak, remembering the words of the Lord Jesus himself said, it is more blessed to give than to receive. This is the word of the Lord.
Testament reading comes from Revelation chapter 7. After this I looked, and there before me was a great multitude that no one could count from every nation, tribe, people, and language standing before the throne before the Lamb. They were wearing white robes and were holding palm branches in their hands. And they crowd out in a, cried out in a loud voice, Salvation belongs to our God who sits on the throne and to the Lamb. All the angels were standing around the throne and around the elders and the four living creatures. They fell down on their faces before the throne and worshiped God, saying, Amen, praise and glory and wisdom and thanks and honor and power and strength be to our God forever and ever. Amen. Then one of the elders asked me, These in white robes, who are they? And where did they come from? Sir, you know, he said, these are they who have come out of the great tribulation. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. This is the word of the Lord.
please stand for the reading of the gospel. The Holy Gospel according to John chapter 10. Jesus was experiencing more conflict during his final days before his crucifixion. Then came the festival of dedication at Jerusalem. It was winter and Jesus was in the temple courts walking in Solomon's colonnade. The Jews who were gathered around him saying, how long will you keep us in suspense? If you are the Messiah, tell us plainly. Jesus answered, I did tell you, but you do not believe. The works I do in my Father's name testify about me, but you do not believe because you are not of my sheep. My sheep listen to my voice. I know them, and they follow me. I give them eternal life, and they shall never perish. No one will snatch them out of my hand. My Father who has given them to me is greater than all. No one can snatch them out of my Father's hand. So I and the Father are one. This is the Gospel of the Lord.
Grace, mercy, and peace are yours from God our Father, from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Before we start our sermon today, I wanted to do something. I wanted to have a, a Mother's Day prayer. Um, what I'd like you to do, if your mom is here or, you know, you're sitting next to a mom, maybe reach out, put your hand on her. If you've got to move seats, buddy, you better get to it. Yeah, that's way too far. So if you've got to stretch out, you can't. If your mom is, is not here today and she has passed or she just couldn't make it today, go ahead and place your hand over your heart as we remember our moms and pray for the ones that are here today and the ones who have gone before us. So will you, will you pray? My mom's traveling, so she, she just abandoned me up here. But I'm just kidding. Sorry, Mom, I know you're watching. <laughs> let's, uh, let's pray. He Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you for our mothers. We thank you for all those times that it was Mom who, uh, who understood our tears, who comforted us in those disappointments, and who calmed our fears. Lord, we thank you for our moms and the times we laughed and played and smiled. We thank you for the times it was moms who helped us dream, who helped us along life's way and gave us the confidence that we needed to be able to take that next step. Thank you for mom, for her steadfast love, and for the way she cares for us. So Lord Jesus, bless her care for her, give her strength, fill her with joy and wisdom and love. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for my mom. We pray this in your name. Amen. Our text today comes to us from John chapter 10, where Jesus is once again comparing himself to the good shepherd. Throughout scripture, we have been promised that shepherds would watch over us, Jesus being the good shepherd. And I find it to be a fitting metaphor. I also find it to be a fitting metaphor for moms today. As just like the shepherd is always working, is always patient, is always joyful, is dedicated to us, and gives us life, so do moms. So let's pull out our Bibles, or you can follow along in that John chapter 10. The verses will, of course, appear magically behind me on the screen. But if you want to follow along in your bulletin or your Bible, you can do that as well. And this is from John chapter 10. Then came the festival of dedication in Jerusalem. Winter, Jesus in the temple courts, walking in Solomon's colonnade. Now the feast of dedication is also known as Hanukkah. It celebrated the cleansing and the rededication of the temple after three years of desecration when Antiochus Epiphanes, who was king of Syria, invaded and destroyed it. When he attacked Jerusalem, he instituted a reign of terror upon the Jews of the city, stealing millions in gold and silver from the temple treasury, saying that possessing a copy of the Old Testament law was punishable by death, that circumcising a child was punishable by death, and including any mother who did that to their child, he turned the temple into a house of prostitution, turned it into an altar unto the Greek God where pigs were sacrificed, and along the way killed over 80,000 Jews and an equal number of them sold into slavery. And then it was, of course, the rise of the Maccabees that ended these horrors. And it's told, and perhaps you've heard the story, that when the temple had been purified and the great seven-branched candlestick was relit, there was only one little portion of unpolluted oil that could be found. And because it was still intact, still had that seal, the impress of the ring of the high priest, it was the only one. And by all normal measures, that oil would have only been enough to light the lamps for a single day, but it lasted for eight days until the new oil could be created and used again. That's Hanukkah. But back to the text, it would seem that this confrontation between Jesus and the religious leaders, or Jews, as John always refers to them in the temple courts, happen this time when Jesus isn't even teaching. He's just kind of walking along in Solomon's colonnade, which is that little portico that ran along the east outer court of the temple. And it's here in the book of Acts where we'll see later on that Peter is going to address the crowd after he and John healed the man who had been lame for his whole life. It's here also where the Jewish believers who believed in Jesus as the Christ would give witness and gather and Praise him. And just a side note, because I like walking, maybe you do too, I got to think that Jesus, he was the guy who would have hit his 10,000 steps. Can I get an amen? I mean, the guy was always walking with his disciples or on his own. When he was walking, something's happening. Really, life is happening, right? 
whether he stops as he's walking and asks a question, does a miracle, is going to a place that needs him, offers a teaching or a parable, it's always a good thing when walking. So it might not be too much of a stress today or a stretch today to say, let us never underestimate the power of a walk, a family walk. If you're like me, you like to go on family walks and look for cats. But take a walk with mom today. Maybe hold her hands. No phones. Just walking and talking. Last minute gift idea for you, sir. And so, uh, yeah, let's get back to the text. This is verse 24. The Jews who were gathered there around him saying, how long are you going to keep us in suspense? If you're the Messiah, tell us plainly. Jesus answers, I did tell you, but you did not believe. The works I do in my father's name testify about me, but you do not believe because you are not my sheep. My sheep listen to my voice. I know them and they follow me. The Jews refuse to listen to or believe in Jesus. And here we can see that they're hoping to blame their unbelief on him. They're asking this question because maybe they want him to declare himself king of the Jews so that they can go and run to the governor and say, look, 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 like they're going to do a little while later. And here the Jews are also saying, all the miracles that you have done account for nothing. So I find it very interesting that Jesus ridiculously plainly says, I have told you. Go back to John 3 with me, where he says, I am the one who came down from heaven. Where he says, I am the one, whoever believes in me shall have eternal life. Go to John chapter 5 and you will find him saying, I am the unique son of God. I will judge all humanity. That you should honor me just as God For I and he are one. In John chapter 5 again where he says that the Hebrew scriptures speak and point to him. In John chapter 7 where he says I perfectly reveal God the Father to you as his son. In John chapter 8 where he says I always please God my Father and I have never sinned. In John chapter 8 again where he says that he is uniquely sent from God. Where he says even before Abraham was, I was. In John chapter 9, when he says, I am the son of man prophesied by Daniel. In John chapter 10, where he says, I will raise myself from the dead. Jump back again to John chapter 6. We missed one. I am the bread of life. John chapter 8, I'm the light of the world. John chapter 10, I am the door. John chapter 10, I am the good shepherd. See, the problem wasn't that Jesus was unclear about who he was and where he came from. The problem was that the religious leaders had hearts of unbelief because Jesus wasn't the Christ they wanted. The works Jesus did demonstrated that he was from God, that he was true to his word. In fact, the works done in the Father's name show us exactly the Christ that God sent to us and how much he loves us. So again, The problem wasn't that Jesus was unclear about who he was and where he came from. The problem was that these religious leaders had hearts of unbelief because Jesus was not the Christ that they wanted. They knew, but they did not want Jesus as their Messiah. Didn't want what Jesus offered, didn't want to be known by Jesus, loved by Jesus, or saved by Jesus. And unfortunately, this is sadly nothing new for the people of God. The prophets themselves experienced this too. Here's from Jeremiah chapter 5. Lord, do not your eyes look for truth. You struck them, but they felt no pain. You crushed them, but they refused correction. They made their faces harder than stone and refused to repent. I thought these are only the poor. They're foolish, for they don't know the way of the Lord, the requirements of God. So I'll go to the leaders and speak to them. Surely the leaders will know the way of the Lord, the requirements of God. But with one accord, they too had broken off the yoke and torn off the bonds. They had eyes but did not see, had ears but did not want to hear. And this is not just a danger that the people of God face back then. It's also one that each and every one of us face today. To hear what we want to hear, to see only what we want to see. I think about our phones. I think about the personalness of our phones. All those articles, our Instagram feeds, the podcasts, the ads, the stories, the pictures that are designed for us, sent to us, chosen based on what we ourselves have looked at and liked before, all so that we can get even more of what we want. 
I'll go so far as saying that even with the algorithms getting told what we want to be told, or in some cases, told what they want us to believe. And they dress it up very smartly, don't they? So that we will not know the difference. If you find yourself wanting to read about people with a certain viewpoint, well then, endless amounts of articles to read. Yes, friends, do not make any mistake. We are in danger of seeing what we want to see and hearing what we want to hear. And taken to the next step, it's only a little while before we become people who want to only be around people who think and look like us. Allowing a face on a box or a face on a screen, the time and the power to convince us that this feeling inside of us is right, it's okay. How this and only this is what you should care about. Only this is what you should do. And all along it is the sheep us who have forgotten about the voice of the shepherd, finding ourselves turning to our own voice or to the voice that shouts the loudest. And this just cannot happen. Not for disciples of Jesus who are called the salt and light of this world. Yeah, it is the good shepherd, the loving good shepherd whose voice comforts us and soothes us, but it is also the voice of the good shepherd who challenges us and demands holiness from us and love in action. If our role in this society is to be salt and light, it is our role then to engage with the world, not in a way that shouts and fight, but one that gives witness to the glory of God, to the hope that we have in him. And I know I'm getting off track here, and this is kind of bringing in a little bit to this text here, but the time is now to stop going with the flow and keeping our heads down, just hoping for the best. The time is now to be concerned with who we are meant to be. That scripture from the Apostle Paul, that we who have been consecrated to God to be who we are meant to be, to be concerned more with generosity in a time of financial hardship, to be more concerned with care and trusting in God than what is out there. It starts with words and works, words and works of love. Learning how to be people who speak in kindness and humility, not ones who just have all the right answers. How to be confident of what we believe and to be loving, even to those who disagree with us. But again, I'm Missing the focus of the text. It's not about us. It's today about what the shepherd does. So this peace about being his sheep. We're not just random sheep to whoever would say I am a shepherd, but to Jesus' sheep. We are the sheep. He is the shepherd. I'm reminded of a story I read in a devotional once. You know, when you are a child at the beach and you've gone a little too far on a crowded day, and you're trying to make it back to mom or dad, but you can't find them. They're not looking for the people who have the best beach bod. They're not looking for the one who is the tannest or who brought the biggest bag of Doritos. The little child will walk past every single one of those because they are looking for one person, their person, listening for one voice, the one that they belong to. There are many voices and choices and turns that we could take. But where do we belong? We belong to the shepherd. And I get if you found yourself sitting on someone else's towel recently or you find yourself struggling to swim because of whatever waves or seagulls are attacking you. I get it. I've been there too a few times. And it's hard when we think we're all alone. It's hard for moms having to balance it all, to care for those around you, to work, to give, to look a certain way, to be a certain someone. It's the shepherd. The the shepherd does not ever tell us who we are supposed to be, but rather he tells us plainly, we are his. The shepherd's voice is radically different than everyone else's. Because it is a voice who tells you exactly who you are, not who you are supposed to be. Not how you're supposed to think or what you're supposed to do. It's his voice and it is the shepherd himself who will secure your needs, provide for you, find you, 
and put you on the path of righteousness, has promised to deliver you, has promised to be with you always, to bring you home, to put His Spirit in you, to do good, to grow, to pray. Is that not what we just sang? Is that not what the psalmist says in Psalm 23? Go back and look at that text from Psalm 23. We're all part of one flock, but He cares for us individually. My shepherd, the Lord is my shepherd, and I will dwell with Him. The text continues in John where it says, My sheep listen to my voice. I know them and they follow me. I give them eternal life and they shall never perish. No one will snatch them out of my hand. My Father, who has given them to me, is greater than all. No one can snatch them out of my Father's hands. I and the Father are one. Don't know how much time you've let those verses sink in, but do it. Let them sink deep into your soul. Let them become a part of you. Because those words may be very plain, but they are powerful. Because those are the words of the voice of the shepherd. A voice telling you. For the shepherd himself calls us, speaks to us, lets us know that we are known. Known. Known deeply. What defines you is not that you know God, but that He knows you. That He has taken note of you. Look what He says in Psalm 39. You've searched me, Lord. You know me. You know even when I sit and when I rise. You even perceive my thoughts from afar. You discern my going out, my laying down. Lord, you are familiar with all my ways. Before a word is on my tongue, Lord, you know it completely. And it is you, Lord, who has hemmed me in, behind and before, It is you, Lord, who lays his hand upon me. Where can I go, Lord, from your spirit? Where can I even flee from your presence? If I go up to the heavens, you are there. If I make my bed in the depths, you are there. If I rise on the wings of the dawn, if I settle on the far side of the seed, even there, your hand guides me. Your right hand holds me tight. For you created my inmost being, knit me together in my mother's womb. Lord, I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. And I know that full well my frame was never hidden from you. But from the beginning, you wove me together. That, that is the kind of known that each one of us sits here today as. And I think if you're sitting next to a mom, you probably know that that's the kind of a mother and the way that she knows her children. Moms know us not because they track our phones, but because they care because they tirelessly give and provide. So today is Mother's Day and we thank them. And today, today we leave here knowing that we are truly known and loved. Being truly loved and known is what fills us. And so I'll close with this. The voice of your Good Shepherd, your Jesus, offers to you the way of life eternal life and a way of love and his promise to you is that no one no voice nothing can ever snatch you out of his hand what he has done for you on the cross is the final word for your salvation and he Jesus says that you belong to him and he Jesus promises to hold on to you the very hands that created this world hold on to you in love. Amen. Today we get to stand together and confess the faith that we share using Paul's letter to the Colossians as our guide. Will you stand with me and confess the faith that we share? We speak together, or we confess together, Jesus Christ is the image of the invisible God.
Let us unite our hearts as ones as we go to our Father in prayer. Dear Jesus, our risen Savior, you are our good shepherd. You gave your life for us, your sheep. It was your great love for us who were lost and strained that moved you to come into this world to live, to die, and to rise again so that we may have life that does not end. To you, O Lord, may all thanks, praise, honor, and glory be given. Lord, in your mercy. Good Shepherd, we thank you for speaking to us through your word and for the promises given in baptism that whoever believes and is baptized will be saved. We praise you for the baptisms of Kenna Rose King, daughter of Derek and Amanda, great-granddaughter of Roger and Carol Sonny, and for the baptism of Fiona Rebecca Rivera, daughter of Alan and Gianna. You have graciously given your Holy Spirit to Kenna and Fiona and to all those who are baptized into your name. So guide and strengthen them in the faith and love of Jesus Christ each day, Lord, as they grow in grace, beauty, and joy. Lord, in your mercy. Good shepherd, by your presence, comfort and cheer us in every journey we make through the dark, shadowy valleys of this life. In our own flock, there are those who especially need your kindness, help, and healing. We pray for Muriel York, Roxanne Zimmerman, Lee Bramson, Susie Seegers, Don Yin, Tizer Cabellas, Dar and Otis Glazer, David Fisher, Thomas Hanscom, Dieter Gonzalez, Kate Andrews, Natasha Chiampa, Craig Scavuzzo, Teresa Scavuzzo, Shirley Stickney, Inga Aguilar, Leslie Cochran, Sabrina Green, and those we name in our hearts. Hold them safely in your arms, Lord Jesus. Restore them and show yourself again as the tender shepherd. Lord, in your mercy. Shepherd and overseers of our souls, when we walk through the valley of death itself, be with us. We pray for the family and friends of Chuck Rady, husband of Norma and father of Kathy and Sharon, grandfather of Sarah, Rebecca, Morgan, and Erica. And Father, we also pray for the family of Susan Feckman, wife of Fred. Lord, for all who grieve, remind them of the bright promise of salvation. Fill them with peace and confidence during this time as they cling to the promise that you are their shepherd and have prepared a place for all who die in faith. Send goodness and mercy to these families as you follow them, Lord and us for all our days. Lord, in your mercy. Wonderful counselor, you have left us with peace and given us peace, a peace that we are secure in. We thank you for conflicts that you have resolved and for your blessings that we are unaware of and for the work of the Holy Spirit in reconciliation and forgiveness. For the conflicts we know between countries in our world send humility, kindness, and unity. For the conflicts we know between family members and friends bring healing and an end to grudges. Lord, in your mercy. Lord Jesus, Son of Mary, we thank you for the women in our congregation and for the gift of mothers. Give mothers love, joy, wisdom, and delight as they raise their children in the uncertainty of this world. Give mothers support of husbands, families, and friends as they care for their physical and spiritual growth of their children. For those who remember their mothers in heaven, and for those who remember children who have died and pregnancies that miscarried, we pray for peace and comfort. For the moms who decided other parents were the best choice for their babies, and to the moms who adopted those kids and loved them fiercely, we pray for strength. For those who are debating whether to be a mother or not, we pray for wisdom and trust in God and family and church support. For those who knew they would never wanted kids, we thank you for the ways they have contributed to our shared world. For those who want children but are experiencing infertility, According to your will, Lord, we pray for miracles. For those who hurt due to a poor relationship with their mother or have been abandoned by theirs, we pray that you would remind them of their identity in Christ who loved us so much that he gave his life for us. And for all of us who have experienced sacrificial love from mothers and mother-like figures, we praise you, O Lord, for placing these godly women into our lives and for the support that they have provided and may continue to provide to us the love of Jesus, Lord, in your mercy. Gracious God, bless us in our mission to fulfill your great commission. For the harvest is plentiful and the workers are few. We hear your voice, shepherd, so send us out to be the hands and feet of Jesus to bring glory to your name, knowing no one can snatch us out of your hand. In your son Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Please be seated as we take a moment to give back to God out of what he has given to us.
please stand. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia, Christ is risen. God, the Father who raised Christ from the dead, open to you the gate of everlasting life. God, the Son who birthed forth from the grave, give you joy as you celebrate his resurrection. And God, the Holy Spirit who brought you to birth and baptism, fill you with strength and peace. Amen. Rejoicing in the power of the resurrection, go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.